Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and continuing on with my presentation, Everything You Know About Isolation Levels is Wrong, we're going to talk uh, a bit about the pessimistic isolation levels in, in SQL Server in this one, uh, specifically the more pessimistic uh, isolation levels like repeatable read and serializable and a, a difference between the two. Isolation levels in SQL Server can typically be defined in about two and a half flavors. We're gonna talk about one and a half of them now, and we'll talk about the other one a little bit later. The, the, the half isolation levels are uh, ones that are typically a little bit harder to define from the perspective of optimism or pessimism. Uh, at the top up there, we have read uncommitted slash no lock, which again are synonyms for each other. Uh, and uh, I, I think sort of a great way of picking a DBA fight is to ask them if read, if read uncommitted slash no lock is an optimistic or a pessimistic isolation level. It's very difficult to describe, isn't it? It's like, what is it? Uh, there's also um, in, well, it's not actually technically honored in SQL Server, uh, but there is an isolation level defined uh, out in the database world called chaos. Uh, if, you, if you've ever used a maintenance plan, you might have seen the isolation level drop down in your maintenance plan. Uh, technically, you can choose chaos there, uh, but you cannot actually uh, have that isolation level honored by SQL Server. You might choose it just to freak people out, but um, it, the SQL Server doesn't actually do anything with it. Then you have isolation levels where uh, reading data involves like actually locking rows. Now under read committed slash no lock, there, there, you do take schema stability locks because you want to make sure that the table and like the table definition can't change while you're reading data. So like you can't like add or drop indexes or change columns or add columns or drop columns because that would change the query results. So you do have to take locks to even to honor no lock. But under read committed, uh, you will take these tiny little locks row by row or page by page, maybe, uh, that will take and release locks very quickly and not hold on to those. Nothing will increase the lifespan of those locks naturally. Uh, there are some other things that might, that where lock escalation would happen. So that's read committed. That's this one. And you might notice that there is a little shrimp next to read committed because even though it, it is pessimistic, it is very weakly pessimistic. The next one down is repeatable read. And what repeatable read will do will lock the keys for any rows that you've read. It will not uh, lock range. It will not lock ranges of keys. So you can change data in between keys, but you can't change any of the keys that you've locked. Sort of a weird quirk that's a little hard to describe with repeatable read in SQL Server is that it doesn't like look ahead uh, to lock rows. It only locks rows as it reads them. So. Like, like they're like, like under really, like under not even really weird, but just under the correct uh, concurrency scenario, you can even have repeatable read, like, like read up to a certain point in the table and then have table, have data ahead of that change where it actually maybe wouldn't be as repeatable of a read as you would hope. So this one gets one, uh, this one gets one weightlifter for uh, its, its peasant pessimism. Then you have serializable, which is really, really pessimistic. Serializable does look ahead a bit, and serializable does lock uh, keys between keys that you might have, uh, have locked. So if you have a lock on like one and three, like it won't allow anything to get inserted between one and three. Repeatable read, if you lock one and three, it actually would allow you to insert between one and three, and that's what we're gonna look at in the demos. The vast, 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 vast majority of applications and queries that I see in my day-to-day -day SQL travels do not need repeatable read or serializable across the board. Uh, one thing that's very important to take away from this presentation is that no isolation level is going to be 100% perfect for every single query and every single workload. We're gonna talk more about that, but it's something that I, I need you to sort of mentally prepare for. Uh, I do think that most workloads I see would function much better on, like for the majority of the queries under an optimistic isolation level. And talking people out of using read committed is often a very, very tall task because like I said in the intro video, a lot of people have just the completely wrong view of how optimistic isolation levels function and have a lot of misconceptions about them. They have been misinformed. 
uh, they have they have seen misinformation. So we need to sort of start to dispel some of the problems that people have with those. So, but let's let's refocus let's refocus our efforts on repeatable read and serializable, so I can show you an important difference between them. Now I've got this table here called pessimism, and I'm going to let's just make sure that uh, everything is ready to go here, and I'm going to insert uh, I think that's five rows uh, into this table one three five seven nine. Yes, we are good there. And the reason I want to do that is because this will help me show you how the difference between repeatable read and serializable and how, the, how, it, how rows are locked, or rather how keys are locked uh, for these two, different, uh, these two different isolation levels. So repeatable read will only lock rows that it has read <clears throat> and will only lock rows that, like, it doesn't look ahead to lock rows that it, like, there's no, like, future locking on rows. It allows changes around locked keys, but it does not allow changes to locked keys. So over in my query helper one window, I have uh, these queries. And down here in uh, this, this window, we're gonna keep this query. The only reason I have this one equals select one in here is so that uh, w when we look at the query plan, you can see that there is, like if, if without that, it does like the uh, simple parameterization thing. And I just want you to be aware that the literal value in there is what SQL Server is working with. That's what one equals select one does here. I have a video and a blog post about it if you want to look further into that. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's r begin a transaction. Uh, we're going to issue this query with repeatable read and with a row lock hint. The row lock hint is, um, I don't know, a bit immaterial to this is just to make sure that uh, we lock at the exact granularity that we care about. So I have retrieved rows 1, 3, 5, and 7, which is exactly what my query specified. And the execution plan is very simple. It's just a clustered index scan. We apply that predicate to find, uh, 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 we seek to, sorry, clustered index seek to find rows where the ID is less than or equal to 7. If I come over into this window, and let's just make sure that we are in good shape here. <clears throat> and let's make sure we're in the right database. Uh, if we try to run this update, this update will get blocked. This update cannot run because this update um, uh, is stuck, right? This update is trying to lock a key value, right? If we come and look at this, we are trying to lock ID one and our read query in this window uh, has, has ID one locked in a transaction using the repeatable read isolation level. So we can't actually do this. Now I'm gonna tell you something kind of funny about SQL Server Management Studio. <clears throat> this, is a this is a lesson that I learn um, usually multiple times a, a month, <laughs> or a lesson that I have to remember multiple times a month. If you begin a transaction and uh, that never finishes and you just hit cancel up at the top there, uh, it doesn't do anything to the transaction. You still, have to, you still have to roll back or commit that transaction so that you don't end up with multiple transactions in the same session, which can be very, very confusing. Okay, so that's, that's not fun there. So we can see that the effect of that repeatable read query where we are not allowed to lock a key, uh, the key value that we had locked with repeatable read. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're going to insert even numbered, I guess we're, we're gonna call zero an even number here, which probably is gonna break some mathematician's heart, but we're gonna insert even numbered keys around those. And you'll see that we are absolutely allowed to do that. If we run this query and roll it back immediately, this query will see uh, all of the rows that we just inserted along with all of the locked rows from the other query. So repeatable read does allow row movement between keys. It does not, does, does, just does not allow row movement to, or like row changes to the keys that we've already read. We'll also see that that's true if we run and do this, where in uh, the scope of this transaction, uh, we'll select everything from the table here. Uh, we'll update the ID nine, which we have not locked. We have not looked, we have only locked up to row seven. We, we'll, up that, we'll update that to ID two. We'll select everything from the table. Uh, then we'll actually delete row two and look at the table contents again, and we'll see exactly that every we'll see that everything happened successfully. Uh, in this one, we have one three five seven nine. 
Uh, after the update, we have moved row nine to ID two, right? That's this one, or uh, ID nine to ID two. And in this query, we have deleted ID two, and we just have rows one, three, five, and seven. So repeatable read does allow some changes to data as queries are running. This can be useful if you, you know, have queries where you are okay with this, but and like this does reduce the chances of locking and deadlocking with your with queries under repeatable read, but it's not fit for it's not suitable for every query, every type of query that runs. Now let's look uh, at let's roll this back, make sure we don't have anything weird going here, and now let's look at serializable. So we're going to put some of this stuff into a new window. And what I want to show you here real quick, oops, is uh, copy that, not, not do the other thing, uh, is we're going to look at how serializable changes that. All right, so just really quick, we're going to do this. We're going to uh, get rid of the contents of, what, of everything that we had in this window up to about here. We are already in the right database and everything. And if I come over here and I begin a transaction, and I select everything from this table where the ID is less than or equal to five, we will see uh, how serializable is, is different than repeatable read. So let's try to insert some rows into the table. Now, again, we're gonna begin a transaction and we're gonna try to do this insert, but this transaction is gonna get stuck. If we come back over to, um, if we come back over to SP who is active, we will now see this this weird range lock where SQL Server is saying we have locked this range of, of rows and rather this range of key values and this query actually can't insert into this because we are trying to insert this value six. All right, if we cancel this and uh, we roll, let's just use this to roll back that transaction rather than try to commit it. Um, <clears throat> and we quote out the insert of six, we will be able to insert this stuff into here. So now we have for this part of the query, now we've inserted rows uh, that didn't exist in the table before, but that we inserted them beyond the point where we had locked key values. So serializable does not lock the whole table, but it will lock the keys that you have selected from a table, which means if we come over here and we say select everything where the rows are less than or equal to 10, in the same transaction, we will see two different uh, points of view of the data. Now, serializable is a, a snapshot view of the data. Now, even though it doesn't have snapshot in the name, where things are hard to, uh, where things get dicey with serializable as an isolation level though, are that um, it, like when serializable means that your query executed uh, in a way that meant that it sort of executed in isolation. What we don't know is the precise schedule that your query was, was executed in to keep it isolated from those other things. All, so what, what serializable guarantees is not that you see data as of the time that a transaction started and rows started getting locked. You see, uh, you see a snapshot view of the data at the time your query committed, which is kind of a hard concept to grasp, but that, that's what serializable is. Right. Now, we could, if we, if we really felt strongly about it, prevent that lock on ID, uh, that, that lock where we were blocked trying to get into ID 6, if we wrote our query in sort of a weird way. So if we said where ID is less than 5 and unioned all that with where ID is equal to 5, we wouldn't take that sort of lock ahead. So under serializable, the 6 was blocked, but 8 and 10 were allowed. Uh, the second query that we ran within our transaction will see the inserts that we did in the other transaction that were beyond the scope of the keys that we locked. So the transaction doesn't provide a consistent snapshot view of the data for both serializable queries in it. It does provide a consistent snapshot of the data as of the time that the transaction commits. This, this, is, this is the unchanging view of data that is guaranteed by serializable. Again, what you don't know is the logical order that your transaction occurred in amongst all the other concurrent transactions. 
So be very, very careful when you're choosing between serializable and read committed because they have different locking overhead and they have different locking semantics than might be immediately obvious uh, just by reading some of the documentation on them. So uh, with that out of the way, uh, we are uh, going to move on to uh, other isolation level stuff in, in, the, in, the, in the demos that uh, gets a little bit hairier and a little bit more interesting. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next, next video in the series. Okay, good. Thank you.